So the orange and teal effect isn't some random style that you apply to your images. There are actually some scientific reasons why this particular type of edit is so popular. In fact, the orange and teal effect is super popular among Hollywood movie producers and has become mainstream for photographers like you and me in recent years. Plus, although it may seem like it's just a trendy editing style, there's something behind it that I believe will keep it popular for years to come. So in essence, the orange and teal effect is about color grading and color grading is a fancy term for color correction or color adjustments. So when applying the orange and teal color grading to your photos, you apply one color to your shadows and the other color to the highlights. For images of people, it's most effective to apply the orange to the highlights and the teal to the shadows. And that's due to our skin complexion being closer to orange versus any other color on the color wheel. And I'll prove that in just a moment. So let's check out the scientific reason why the orange and teal color grading works so well for movies and for your photos. So if we take a look at Adobe's color wheel tool, you can see that the orange color is the opposite of teal. So colors that are opposite of each other are considered complementary, And since they are opposite of each other, they create contrast. So here I have a teal background. And if I place an orange circle on it, it pops off the background. And if we choose a color that is not the opposite of teal, let's say green, and then change that circle to that color, it now blends in with the background and is harder to see. Now, if you're wondering about using other complementary colors like yellow and purple, you can do that based on what your creative vision is for your artwork. But when working with photos of people, it's best to stick with orange and teal since skin tones are more in line with orange versus any other color on the color wheel. And I can prove this by loading an image into the color wheel. So if you want to do this for yourself, you can go to color.adobe.com and then click on the extract theme tab and load an image from here. Next, move each one of these circles onto the skin so you can sample the color of the skin and try and choose different luminance values or different tonal ranges. And then when you go back, you'll see those colors are within that orange color range. How cool is that? All right, now let's dive into GIMP to learn how to create the orange and teal edit. And I'm going to share two different ways to accomplish this, plus how to apply it with one click of a button. So the first option I'm going to show you is going to use color balance. So we're going to go up to colors and select color balance from here. And then to apply this particular type of effect in one click, we're going to go into presets and click on orange and teal or orange and teal plus two. And boom, we have our orange and teal effect. How cool is that? Now, the only problem is you don't have this preset. So let me show you how I created this particular orange and teal effect for this image. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of there and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer and I'm going to name it orange plus teal color balance. All right, I'm going to go back up to colors and color balance and we have three different sliders here. We have cyan to red, magenta to green, yellow to blue. And like I mentioned before, we want to apply one color in the shadows and the other color in the highlights. And if you take a look right here, we have a range to adjust the colors in a specific tonal range. So we have our shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's go ahead and start off with our shadows. And I'm going to apply cyan to the shadows, which is more of a teal color. And you'll see that once I begin adjusting the slider to the left to add cyan to the shadows. Now, if you want to add a little bit of green to mute that just a little bit and create a more of a blue color, you can do that. But blue and green is a mixture used for teal and cyan is closest to that out of these three or I should say six colors. So let's go ahead and select highlights next and add some orange. And if I increase the magenta and yellow in equal parts, that creates red. We don't want red, we want more orange. So what I'm going to do is reduce the magenta and keep the yellow a little bit larger or more intense than magenta in this case. So here is the before and the after. We now have our orange and the highlights and the teal 
in the shadows. So to create a preset, so you can apply this in one click, you're gonna click right here. You're going to name it, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call it orange and teal number three, because I've already done a couple of these. I'm gonna go ahead and do number three. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. And then if I go back to color balance, I can select that option and it will remember the settings that I used for that particular edit. And they're saved for all of eternity. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I'm gonna turn this layer off and select the original layer again and duplicate it. Let's call it orange plus teal. And I'm gonna call it curve this time because we are going to use the curve tool to apply the orange and teal effect. So let's go back to colors and select curves. So as you may or may not know, you can adjust the tonal range of your image with this linear line that goes from bottom left to top right. And in the back, you can see a histogram that represents the tonal range for the image. In this case, we have our blacks and shadows over here on the left, midtones in the middle, and then we have our highlights and whites on the right. So we can increase the contrast of this image by creating what is known as an S curve. But what we wanna do this time is we want to create contrast with color. I'll go ahead and reset that. And to do that, we're gonna go inside of our channel value here and select red, green, and blue to create that effect. So I already have a preset for the orange and teal effect, and there it is. So let me show you the different values that I applied to create this effect with the tone curve. And the reason why I like this method over the color balance is because I have more control over where those colors are being applied within the tonal range, whereas before, it's being applied directly in that specific tonal range, but I can fine tune it even further by just placing it in the blacks of the tonal range or just the shadows or midtones or highlights or whatever the case may be based on whatever it is I'm trying to achieve for that creative look. So I have my red channel here and we can see there's an anchor point in the middle and another anchor point over here. So by increasing the reds like so, we add red. Now, the reason why I placed an anchor point here is to control how that edit is being applied. Without it, I'll go ahead and reset this. If I just increase the highlights like so, you can see that linear line is moving throughout the entire tonal range. But by placing an anchor point right here in the middle, we constrict that edit more towards the highlights and the whites versus applying it in the shadows as well. I do not want this particular edit in the shadows or the blacks. So use anchor points to fine tune or control where that edit is being applied. I'll go back to my preset here. And now let's take a look at green. So this time I have my anchor point here in the middle and this time I have it set on the highlights so I can apply the green in the shadows and the blacks. And I'm increasing this higher to add green. If I pull it down, I create magenta. And then for the blue, I did the same thing. I have an anchor point in the middle and I added blue. Pulling it down will add yellow. If you wanna continue elevating your GIMP skills, check out that playlist right there to your left 